Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick Hall O'Clock for the 150th time. Would you believe it? Who'd have thunk it all that time ago? And it's all been made possible by my wonderful Patreon supporters and my channel members. Uh, you can join in the links below. Right, well I've really been looking forward to opening this particular package because... Well, the uh, little note that I put for myself for this one was fibre optics and light and sound. And if that doesn't make you uh, a bit curious, then nothing will. So let me just tip all of this good stuff out. Not the biggest one. All from Bricklink, of course. And uh, here we go. And, ooh, there's some of the very interesting, important stuff. I'm going to do that last. Uh, let's start with this colourful bag. Here we've got some nice uh, bright tree limb pieces. Probably been in all sorts of elves sets and stuff like that, but I think we're going to see a few pieces from the um, Hidden Side set. Welcome to the Hidden Side, 70427 uh, in this haul. Uh, they'll just go under the sea, but they're very keenly priced. So we obviously got lots of those uh, on discount. Uh, we've got a nice head here as well. This is <laughs> a very good one with an iron kind of uh, eye patch. Uh, a gold tooth and all the rest of it. Uh, that's from the character Metal Beard, of course, from the uh, Lego movie. Uh, and uh, that came in four sets, including the absolutely hilarious uh, 30528 Mini Master Building Metal Beard, the uh, potty bag from 2019. So it's probably quite a familiar head to many, but uh, I don't actually have one. And I thought, well, somebody under the sea has probably had an encounter with a shark or some other beastie uh, and lost their eye in a tragic incident. So... I thought that would be a good head. Nothing on the other side. Uh, again, very keenly priced. Uh, then two red wedge pieces. 10 by 3. Uh, these are surprisingly hard to get, actually. Uh, I think I've already mentioned I got an old um, Atlantis set uh, that I really don't want to use. Uh, I got it in a kind of bulk buy with other stuff, and I thought I'd adapt it as kind of a fun video. And I wanted two of these pieces, and I thought they'd be quite easy to get, but they're not. <laughs> They've only been available in four sets, uh, including 8652 Enzo Ferrari, uh, 1 in 17 scale uh, from 2005 uh, and that's quite uh, a good set to mention actually because it matches the real 1 to 1 scale version of that same car that I have parked outside my house just outside the front uh, and that was from 2002 <laughs> Not. No, I wish. Uh, that'd be about half a million quid, I think, if not a million. I don't know. <laughs> I probably wouldn't dare drive it. Anyway, uh, so these are for the Atlantis build. Uh, they're just going to be, well, part of the sides, really, to give it some sort of uh, sort of swooshy shape. So, yeah, I needed a pair of those, and there I've got it. And the other thing about that Ferrari set, which I think is just a crime against Lego in a way, is that on the front of the uh, car itself, where it's got two of these being that very characteristic front, they've actually got a sticker there, a <laughs> cross assembly, and you just know that's not going to last. Much like that Maersk train. It looks really great, but if you're ever going to try and buy a second-hand one and it's got stickers across assembly, you know dirt's probably got underneath it, dust and goodness knows what else, and it probably is coming off. Anyway, uh, I digress. So, as usual, I've just sort of filled my boots with lots of modified, uh, or rather round plates, uh, and some wedge plates as well for under the sea. Uh, I think I've probably got enough of these in sand colour because I'm going to do... The lower depths in dark tan and the uh, main level that we've started with all our bases on in tan. So, I, you know, soon I'm not going to need any more of these. And I think I've got loads, but I'm going to be using them in a sort of multi-layered way. So you'll kind of have it all looking sort of like that for a slope. So it'll be quite subtle uh, and quite interesting, hopefully. So that's why I need quite so many. Uh, oh, I didn't go through the rest of here. Ah, so we'll come to that at the end, and that at the end, because they are light and sound pieces. Hurrah! My first. Uh, unless we include, uh, include back in the 1980s, uh, where I do have some familiarity with them from friends. I didn't actually own them myself, and that was the very late 80s, I'll add. <laughs> Just in case you think I'm incredibly old. Uh, a nice axe there in what looks like the sort of gunmetal colour. That's broken. But not to worry, I just got loads of these because they were probably a penny each or something in old grey. These are old dark grey, arch brick, some of those sort of curvy modified bricks, and some headlight pieces. All just because that old dark grey is slightly different, as you know, I always mention that. Probably got bored of it by now. Some trans pink uh, one by one tiles. 
trying to think why I got that now. I think there was a specific reason. I'm going to have to check why, because uh, this order wasn't that recent. So, yeah, it might just be decoration for the fun fair. Who knows? But that looks good. So I'm going to put those to one side so I don't forget them. Uh, what other bag was I going to open? Here we go. So some more of those in a separate bag. Must be new or used. I'm going to probably wash them all. Sand green for decor under the sea. A couple of these grabber things just for holding on to plants and stuff like that for under the sea. Loads of little cheese wedge pieces. Dark tan. So that'll probably be on the uh, level lower down in my cabinet. Some more of these grabbers in dark red. I think you're going to need all sorts of different colours to mount all sorts of different funny plants on. Kind of look like an alien landscape. Kind of like all those new avatar sets. Uh, new cheese wedge pieces uh, in light bluish grey. Yep. More sand green pieces. Yeah, we can plough through these relatively straightforward bags, can't we? So we get to the really good stuff. One by ones. You don't want to use this colour in huge uh, sort of expanses. It's just the odd flash of that in some other greys. Just really makes it all stand out a lot better. And some wedge plates as well, just for when you want an interesting angled bit. So yeah, they must have been keenly priced. I've got a few more of my Atlantis tridents for the Atlantis people who will be somewhere in my cabinet. I haven't worked out they're going to be on the very bottom in the UV bit or in that sort of a bit just below the main level. Uh, but there we go, three more of those. And two more of the kind of welding torch pieces. Uh, you have a sort of tank piece going on to there and then you can do some welding there. And I believe you can do welding underwater as well. And I think that's why I got these because I wanted some people to be cutting uh, either into a wreck or maybe using them uh, to help build that uh, tunnel we've got uh, underneath uh, the waves there. So that'll be good. Probably don't need two of them, but I think they were keenly priced again. So that's good. Lots of slopes in light bluish grey. One by two by two ones. Then we've got some black plant pieces, which are also from that hidden side set. There's quite a lot of them. I thought they'd be quite fun. Just, well, either for the very bottom where it's very dark or to have around my oil pipe, because I thought that you know, if I had a patch of these that were all green and then the ones around the oil pipe were all black, it would kind of <laughs> insinuate that they had died uh, because of some pollution, uh, which I thought would be quite good. Because that's the reason why I put the oil rig in there. We can have all the eco people uh, and then all the sort of, uh, you know, exploitative oil people. And maybe nature is rebelling against the pipe itself. So there we go. So that will be a really good fun scene, I think. Another head tried to escape us. Again from that uh, Welcome to the Hidden Side set. This is uh, Jack Dan... Jack... Daniels was it, or Jack David? It was Jack David's, wasn't it? Uh, his head. I kind of like it in blue. Uh, there was another one that was similar to this. He looks very worried on one side, doesn't he? And kind of stern on the other. There was another one, which I've already put in due to a suggestion from a subscriber into a diver's helmet where he's kind of <laughs> run out of oxygen and he's holding his breath. I thought that was a brilliant idea. Uh, but it also occurs to me that it kind of looks like he's you know, lit up inside his helmet with a sort of blue light. And it kind of looks like maybe he's actually a yellow skin guy, but, you know, with a blue light shining on him, like he's uh, in very deep diving, like in the film The Abyss or something like that. So maybe I could have his partner uh, with a stern face on, or maybe just a worried face because he's worried his pals run out of oxygen or something like that, because um, that's how they look with the yellow head on. So I, I don't know, you see what I mean? It really looks like that person's lit up by some artificial light. So maybe I'll have a few of them with different blue heads. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so those can go back to one side. I just brought those to show you what I meant. Let's make a totem out of these two. Whoa. There we go. Then the only other interesting part, I think, is this one. Uh, which I'm going to be using for a build under the sea as well. It's actually kind of a mechanical build. I'm not going to have it motorized, but it's something that's going to have a turny handle. Uh, and I don't want to spoil it any more than that, but this is kind of a vital part um, that will be the interface with the rock. It'll be the bit that's just sort of showing through the rock, if you see what I mean. And that's why I needed it in this dark bluish grey, so it wouldn't stand out so much. So the movie bit will be coming out of these holes. Uh, and then this will hopefully blend into a rocky surface and won't look too obvious. Uh, and then we'll have the hidden mechanism and a handle that you just kind of turn uh, when you've got the doors to the cabinet open. But I still think that will be good. So, yeah, that will be coming to a video near you soon. <laughs> Get rid of those bags. And then, golly, we're already on to the final one. But I do think I've got something else to one side that I'm going to be showing you as well. 
Oh, interesting bits, interesting bits. Right, so here, loads more cheese wedge pieces in dark green and olive green. Two more of these tanks that I use so much of for the feet of that uh, undersea tunnel, but I want some more to actually be oxygen tanks, or at least for their stickers as well. Uh, you probably know now they came from the deep sea submarine, 60092 in 2015 on the top there. So that's great to have another pair of those. They're usually incredibly cheap because they're not that usable pieces, but they do look like feet for all sorts of things. I'm sure I could even use them for plants or something, you know, have something popping out of there and a fish swimming by attached to that or goodness knows what. But yeah, I think they'll be really useful. Da -da -da, then I've got loads of these um, sort of sponges I'm thinking for under the sea. So we've got that, what looks like um, medium azure. Yep. I think so. And then we've got two in blue. And then we've got one, two, three, four in trans pink. So that's nice. So they'll look really good under there. We've got one more spiky club because I took all the clubs uh, from my uh, Splat A Frog game uh, and gave them to the uh, Cyclopses that will be part of that Cyclops army under the uh, city. Uh, so I needed a couple more there. And also, if I do have enough, I need some for my cavemen, which eventually I'm going to... Uh, remember I got that mammoth, the woolly mammoth? Uh, so I'm going to have them riding that. So they'll need some clubs, because that's what cavemen have. Uh, this dark brown one came with a Series 5 cave woman. Uh, so that's cool. I'm still, I think, hunting for one of the really big ones <laughs> that I keep getting sent uh, by mistake. Right, so now we're on to the really old, really fun stuff. Uh, that I haven't seen in ages. So this is a sound piece, and you turn that to select, as I recall, two different sounds. So how are we going to power that? Well, I've got an old-style battery box, so I should be able to just attach that on there. I think this is how it works. And then, there we go. Put it near the microphone. So we've got a woo, woo, woo. And then, hold on, let's leave that on. You can turn it off, and then... Ah, then we've got the da 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 da. So what am I going to use that for? I've got absolutely no idea. Uh, basically, I bought that because I was buying the other stuff and it seemed like a reasonable idea and a reasonable price. So wherever I use the others, I'll probably use this as well, just in case you want to add a siren to it. I mean, what needs a siren? Well, usually, I suppose, police uh, things and fire things. And that's the sets that they uh, originally came with. Uh, one was 6450, the mobile police truck from 1986. Another set I don't like the name of because what sort of police truck isn't mobile? It's not really a truck if it's uh, not mobile, is it? A static police truck? No. Uh, <laughs> which, as I recall, because my friend had that, uh, as I mentioned, in the very late 80s, <laughs> um, there wasn't much storage on the back of that truck for all of the stuff that comes with it, because, well, most of the uh, body of that is one of these battery boxes, so there's very little space in there, as I recall. Uh, but it had one of these, as did the uh, fire version, uh, 6480 hook and ladder truck. So I was very jealous of them because they had both of them, two brothers. Uh, so uh, yeah, one each. So that is really good fun. Ideas for that, please. Uh, and also in those sets, both of them, you got these uh, lights as well, which is the old light and sound. And I think they flash one way and stay on solid the other way. You can get little kind of plastic caps that go on these. So you can make them blue lights or red lights or whatever. So this will just be uh, plain uh, yellow light, I suppose. So there's, oh, there we go. There's the alternating flash, which is pretty cool. So I need ideas for this. Should it be a fire thing or something like that? Or maybe something under the sea? I don't know. And then that's just solid on. Yeah, so I remembered it right. So I have no idea what I'm doing with these two things, but I like them a lot. Let's have them both on. Oop. Hee hee. <laughs> Yep, so ideas needed for them. So I'm just going to pop that there. Now this, what remains, is new to me. Very odd looking, I think you'll agree. And something that um, when I discovered existed, because I didn't really know about this, uh, I thought I need to get one of these immediately. And that's what made me find this vendor. Because um, essentially this is a fibre optics unit. And what it does is it converts a motor... Uh, into firing a light down each of these sort of eight little holes down dun, 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 one of these little uh, optical fibers 
and well it probably take me a bit of time to set it up and I've only got seven fibers unfortunately I should have eight I, I think I'm going to be sorting another one in a future haul uh, but essentially what it is is it's powered by a motor and in the sets that it came with uh, like set uh, 6979 Interstellar Starfighter from 1997 Wow, that is absolutely amazing, isn't it? <laughs> From the UFO line. Uh, sets like that had a little mini motor uh, that I think goes on this side. Yeah, it must do because the light's coming out that side. Uh, and it would kind of turn it around. And then the light essentially spins, I presume, on the inside of this unit behind each one of these and lights them up in turn. And then the light gets kind of fired down the pipe. Yeah, sounds complicated, doesn't it? But we'll have to try and get this working in a minute. So if you're interested, uh, that is part 6637. Uh, you can look in the inventory of the set 6979, like I just said, if you want to find uh, these as well. Uh, but yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to get this set up uh, to see if it will work for me. Now, uh, I don't have one of those micro motors, so the motor I'm going to be using is this one which I have to give thanks to somebody because they sent it in. You know who you are, uh, one of my brick calls. So uh, if you want to send something in to the channel, you can to the usual uh, PO box address. And I intend to use this to power this block uh, using a more modern battery box uh, to, well, see if it works. So that's already going around like that. And it's very nice and quiet. I think you'll agree. The micro motors that would have come in that set are really noisy apparently. Uh, so anyway, I think if I take this pulley off, that should just attach to that. Probably have to join them together somehow. Let's see, what can I do? Uh, I've got a, uh, what have I got? I've got a four by six to hand. So let's see if that will join those two together. Yeah, there we go. So hopefully that will then spin that. Oh good, that's working. So really now I've just got to, shall I do this live or shall I pause? I don't know. Let's try it. I'm too excited. Ooh. So hopefully all these are not, they look very nice. They look barely used actually. Right, so I think this bit goes on like a clip or something like that. So you can attach that to something else. You know, let's say, uh, you know, back here or something like that. And then this bit goes in, oh, I've done it too far away goes in this end. So if I just shove it in one of these holes, let's see if it works with just one in. Ooh, uh, can't see anything there. Am I doing it right? Am I doing it too fast? No, can't see anything with there. Now the vendor did say it was tested and working. So I'm hoping that maybe it's just my filming lights. It's not allowing it to show up. Uh, I'm gonna have a bit more experimentation and then join you again when I've got it working. Right, I'm back and I've worked out what I was doing wrong. Uh, it might be really obvious to you if you think about it. Uh, it is kind of obvious. Uh, basically, I need to apply power to both sides of this because this is just providing the motor. Uh, it isn't providing the light that must be inside here somewhere. So essentially it needs a uh, power to each. So I'm just doing that with two cables temporarily. I'll probably get some of the actual light and sound bricks so I can kind of link it together a bit more conveniently. Uh, but this will do for now. So we've got one bit powering the motion that is circular, the other one with the bulb inside. And now with seven of our eight optical fibers on the top, we can have a trial run. And there you can kind of see it going around each of those in turn. I could technically slow it down. Ooh, so you can see each one individually. It's not very bright, is it? But let me see if I just uh, turn out my filming lights. Let's see what happens there. Ooh, that's a bit better, isn't it? So I bought this out of, well, curiosity really. Uh, and I've got no idea again how I'm going to use it. I kind of wanted something that was Lego and this amazing in my collection. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have to think of ideas. Now, I could use it uh, for something alien, of course, much like that UFO ship that it came from. It looks uh, very futuristic, I must say. It's almost like uh, something that should be in the back of the DeLorean or something like that, isn't it? Um, but I could also use it for maybe my alien cantina as some sort of decor. Uh, but it's not that bright. Maybe it'd be better if it was enclosed. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. Oh, now you're talking, you see. Yeah, a bit hard to show you with no filming light. Oh, wow. No filming lights. But so if you have all these spread out on clips, 
then you know you can get them in an interesting pattern it could look really amazing uh, another thing i was thinking was under the uh sea in the deep sea cabinet of course twenty thousand bricks under the sea maybe it could be sort of the tentacles of a squid or something like that though obviously it's going to have to have all of this inside its body and some wires or something like that so yeah it's going to be tricky to use i must say so another thing that i need your help with now yeah bearing in mind it's got to have all of this hidden away so justice is coming out i mean it could almost be a plant in the very bottom level couldn't it you could kind of think that was the rocky surface and have the motor built in and then that effect coming from it oh yes really good it's quite good near the base you can see the circular stuff going on when it's in shadow yes that's really good fun actually i mean obviously it'd be better if it was brighter uh, but, you know, it's only nine volts going into this thing, so it's not really that surprising. And uh, well, it does look quite good when confined. Anyway, tell me what you think for your ideas of that. I'm glad I got it working because I was going to become quite depressed. <laughs> the main reason I bought the order uh, was uh, broken. Uh, it did say tested and working, so I suppose I could have gone back to them. But anyway, now I'm just on the hunt for the eighth wire here. Wow, right. Filming lights back on then. Cool. Very happy. Uh, so there's just one more thing I've bought this week. Uh, I wasn't uh, in the market for a huge amount of stuff from lego.com, uh, but I did really want the free gift that was uh, currently moving van. So basically, I went on eBay and bought one on its own. And here it is, the great big removals truck. Set 40586 from the current year, obviously. And I just absolutely love this set. I mean, it's very chunky and big, but I suppose it has to be for a removals van. But I really love the old style, almost sort of, I'm thinking of it as an old Buick or something like that kind of uh, front to it. Very American anyway. Uh, and these really big chunky wheels, the cab in very bright red and the logo, which is kind of a mix between something quite stylized. Uh, being it's all sort of shaded and in these muted colours, but also that very classic logo of the box with the two arrows around the world. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of the colour scheme, I must say, of that sticker, but nonetheless, uh, I do like it sort of harking back to older sets. Uh, one thing I also like, apart from this brilliant grill here done with little two-by-two two dish pieces, uh, is... The characters, I think, although they're very sort of boring in the sense of the uh, torsos that have been provided, the, the faces are absolutely perfect. You've got this guy with his tongue out, sort of trying to work out how to tessellate all the things into the back of the van and get everything included. Uh, and then you've got the lady with a very sort of uh, face because either something's wobbly or maybe she just heard a very expensive sounding crash coming from the back of the van. So yeah, I think this is absolutely great. Uh, a couple of problems I had with it. Uh, it didn't have a front number plate, which we need in the UK. So I've put on a pair front and back. So they're the same. Uh, also, the one provided was a completely different style. I don't like it when they do that because it doesn't make much sense. Also, they have the indicators on the inside and the brakes on the outside. I swapped that round. Uh, those are my only real gripes with it. But the best thing, uh, apart from the fact you can lift off the roof, is it comes with absolutely loads of furniture, which we can either use around the city or just keep in the back of here. And it all fits in, which is really good. I'm going to pretty much have to tip it out to show you. Uh, you've probably seen the pictures, but I think my favourite part is this painting. It's of a saxophone uh, with all its keys on there and the mouthpiece up there. And I think that's really good. And if you think back to the jazz club, uh, you remember there was a really good uh, painting on the wall of the dressing room, I think it was. But in the office, uh, there was a really sort of naff two by two one that was really undersized. And what would have been more perfect than this? A saxophone in there. Uh, so that's where I'm going to be putting mine, I'm certain. That'll be a great improvement on that set. So that's what they should have done in the first place, if you ask me. Uh, so there's a nice sort of brick-built uh, handcart, which works very well, as opposed to the, the ones that we're all familiar with as a piece. So that's nice. A box, which the lid has probably gone walkabout. Let's see if we can find it. The man's fallen off as well. Only just all fits in the back, you know. You need instructions to tell you how to get it all to fit together. Uh, and even then, I can't say, as I'm even struggling trying to get it out, um, you know, it's not the easiest to put in. Oh, crikey. All the legs of this thing are falling off. There we go. So this is a set of drawers, of which one has already popped open. And it's got a lamp on it. I'm pretty sure that's not how you move things around, actually just sort of leaving things on the top of uh, drawers uh, with uh, the 
drawers are free to move and so on and just lift the whole thing in. I think you pretty much pack things up. But anyway, that's still good fun. Everyone can recognize that. There's a box here with a lid saying to the jazz club. So I can just leave that outside the front door of that. I think there's a good uh, little tiny scene. A jukebox in a kind of Wurlitzer style. So that's really nice, actually. Really good colours. So maybe we'll have that being delivered somewhere. I don't know. Could almost go in our alien cantina, couldn't it? Uh, another thing that could go in there, or in a theatre, or music hall, or something like that, is this lovely piano. Or maybe even in the dressing room of the jazz club, actually, for them to sort of uh, tune up to. Uh, exercise your voice before your performance. So, yeah, really good stuff. Uh, I wish they'd released it a little bit earlier, this truck, so I could have got it with the jazz club. Uh, but nonetheless, I got it at quite a good price for such a wonderful set, so I'm pretty happy with it. So I can recommend that. That's set 40586, Moving Truck. Uh, it kind of also reminds me of some very, very old sticker sheets you could get with some um, catalogues, one that I inherited from uh, an older relative, which had uh, some old removal van stickers on it. And I always kind of had plans of building a big truck with the removal stickers on the sides of it. Uh, so let me know if you've got those old, old stickers. I think they would be a really good addition to this, though they look quite dated, I must say. <laughs> anyway, yeah, awesome faces, lovely stickers. Not too sure about the colour scheme, but yeah, that's going straight on uh, the roads of Brick Nottingham. So all in all, one package, awesome. One set, awesome. And one wonderful new motorised gizmo to have a play with. Wow. What do you think of that? So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. Buying hauls like this with uh, wonderfully, annoyingly <laughs> noisy pieces and fabulously interesting ones is only possible with the uh, support of my Patreon supporters and channel members who make 150 hauls a possibility. So here's to the next 150, I say. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm thinking I might do something in my deep sea cabinet. Maybe that mechanical build that involved this piece here. That'd be good to get designed and in so I can do the rest of the structure of that and make some real progress. Uh, anyway, uh, whatever we get up to, I'm sure we'll have a great time. So until then, see you! Yeah, that's just as bad. <laughs>